According to Graham Hancock, Ocean hides a lot of secrets, and among these, the lost city of Heraklion stands out, a tantalizing enigma only unveiled in 2000. But how this ancient city with mind-boggling technology was built so many centuries ago? Who was this strange ancient civilization? The once glorious metropolis, once full of life, was more than just a city. It was a nexus of ancient cultures and architectural marvels. Found off the coast of modern-day Alexandria, it has incredible stories and eventual downfall. So dive with us as we unravel how this ancient city with mind-boggling technology was built so many centuries ago. The submerged stories of the lost city of Heraklion, or Thonis as it was once known, echo with the sounds of bustling markets, grand religious ceremonies, and the clatter of ships docking. Found near the coast of what we now call Alexandria in Egypt, this once thriving metropolis has been hidden beneath the sea's depths, only to be unveiled in 2000 by underwater archaeologist Frank Godillo and his team. But how did such a vibrant city come into existence, and what were the essential phases in its architectural evolution? The very beginnings of Heraklion are rooted in strategic planning. Positioned at the mouth of the Nile River, the city was envisioned to serve as a critical port and gateway to the vast Mediterranean. Its location naturally implied the importance of a strong network of canals and harbors, allowing a seamless flow of trade. Early infrastructural efforts were therefore directed towards land clearance and waterway development, setting the stage for a city that would soon burgeon into an essential trade hub. As Heraklion's prominence on the ancient world stage grew, so did its architectural ambitions. The cityscape began to be punctuated with grand temples dedicated to a pantheon of gods such as Amon and Khonsu. The magnificent temple of Amon Garab soon emerged as the city's religious nucleus. Concurrently, the increased volume of trade necessitated the construction of extended jetties and quays. Adding to the city's growing architectural complexity, stelae or stone slabs bearing decrees, tax regulations, and treaties started appearing across Heraklion. It's worth noting that one of the most intriguing aspects of Heraklion's architectural narrative is its evolution in design aesthetics. Being a port, the city was exposed to a confluence of cultures. Though the bedrock of its design remained distinctly Egyptian, the structures began to exhibit subtle nuances from Phoenician, Greek, and other Mediterranean influences. Statues, colossal in their size and grandeur, began adorning the city, celebrating deities, revered pharaohs, and mythical creatures. However, prosperity often attracts envy, and Heraklion was no exception. Its wealth and its pivotal position in trade routes made it a coveted target. As a response, the city underwent another transformation, this time focusing on defense. Fortified walls began to envelope Heraklion and watchtowers peered over the horizons. Even the harbor saw reinforcements in the form of gates and rigorous checkpoints. Yet despite all its architectural might and grandeur, Heraklion faced an inevitable decline. A series of natural calamities, possibly including rising sea levels, ground subsidence, and earthquakes, played a role in slowly submerging parts of the city. With the meteoric rise of Alexandria, Heraklion's significance waned, eventually leading to its abandonment. Furthermore, beyond the city's layout and structure, the materials that went into its construction offer profound insights into the choices, values, and resources of its inhabitants. As we delve into the city's fabric, the rich variety of materials paints a vibrant picture of this once majestic metropolis. Limestone, abundant in the Egyptian landscape, was a cornerstone of Heraklion's architectural identity. The structures of Heraklion, especially its temples, statues, and stelae, often boasted of this material's robust yet malleable nature. Carved with both intricate designs and hieroglyphic inscriptions, Limestone stood as a testament to both the city's aesthetic preferences and its reverence for durability. Woven into the city's residential and more commonplace areas were the ubiquitous mud bricks. Molded from a concoction of mud, straw, and water, and then sun-dried, these bricks formed the walls and houses that sheltered the citizens of Heraklion. With the Nile's mud-rich banks nearby, the choice of mud brick was as much about practicality as it was about sustainability. While limestone and mud bricks were common, granite held a special place in the city's heart. Often revered for monumental structures and statues, the granite's resilient nature and its ability to withstand the test of time made it the preferred choice for creations of significance. Sourced from the distant quarries of Aswan, these granite structures also hinted at the city's extensive trade and transport networks. Complementing the strength of granite was the elegance of sandstone. 
Predominantly used in temples, the weighty and enduring sandstone blocks embody the city's aspiration for eternity, especially in structures of religious importance. Yet not all of Heraklion was stone and brick. Timber, sourced from the revered cedars of Lebanon or local Egyptian groves, breathed life into the city's docks and ships. It supported Heraklion's essence as a thriving port, facilitating trade and connectivity with distant lands. It's important to note that in the midst of these foundational materials, metals like bronze and gold shimmered, playing their pivotal roles. Bronze, often molded into tools, weapons, or decorative embellishments, showcased the city's practical and artistic sides. Gold, with its undeniable allure, graced the city's temples, shrines, and statues reflecting both religious reverence and opulence. And finally, giving voice to everyday life and rituals were the ceramics and pottery of Heraklion. Crafted with precision, these objects of art and utility bore witness to the city's daily rhythms and ceremonies. Moreover, Graham Hancock has a penchant for seeking out mysteries that challenge mainstream historical narratives. The lost city of Heraklion is one such place that's garnered attention in recent years, and it's not surprising that Hancock has expressed interest in it. This submerged city holds secrets that, when unraveled, can offer fresh insights into the ancient world, just the kind of exploration Hancock thrives upon. Lost to time and mentioned only in a handful of ancient writings, Heraklion's existence was largely considered mythological until its rediscovery in the year 2000. The findings were astounding. Dozens of ships, massive statues, a temple dedicated to the god Amon, and hundreds of smaller artifacts all sitting submerged under the Mediterranean for over a thousand years. The excellent preservation state of these artifacts hinted at the suddenness of the city's submersion and demise. Graham Hancock's work revolves around challenging the traditional interpretations of ancient history. He postulates that there exists evidence of advanced lost civilizations that have been wiped from our collective memory due to global cataclysms. Hancock's books like Fingerprints of the God and Magicians of the Gods have delved into the mysteries of ancient civilizations from the enigmatic ruins of Giza to the Nazca Lines in Peru. Given Hancock's interest in submerged archaeology, evidenced by his extensive exploration of the potential ancient structures off the coach of Japan, Yonaguni Monument, the lost city of Heraklion fits neatly into his line of inquiry. To Hancock, submerged cities like Heraklion offer a tantalizing window into a past world where sea levels were different and where civilizations thrived in places we now consider remote or impossible. Heraklion is one of the most important archaeological discoveries of our time. It's a city that's been lost for centuries, and its rediscovery is shedding new light on our understanding of ancient Egypt," Hancock said. Heraklion's a reminder of the lost civilizations that lie beneath the waves of the Mediterranean Sea. It's a treasure trove of knowledge that's just waiting to be explored," he added. While Hancock's more speculative theories, such as those involving global cataclysms and ancient astronauts, might not directly tie into Heraklion, the city's rediscovery does bolster a more general point often made by him. There's much about our ancient past we do not yet know, and every discovery reconfigures our understanding. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.